Today on our 2017 Ford F-150, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Airlift Ride Control Air Helper Spring for the rear axle, part number AL59570. So whether you're towing a heavy trailer or your truck's under constant load like ours is with all the toolboxes, ladder racks, not to mention all the other equipment we put in, you will notice that the back end's going to sag down a little bit and the ride's just not that comfortable. Not to mention it's going to put a lot of strain on our rear suspension and it's actually going to lift up the front just a bit which will misalign our headlights and not give us as good attraction on the front tires. Our airbags are going to help support that load and that weight and put our suspension back where it should be. So before we install them, let's take it out for a drive and see how it handles. As I drive my truck over the speed bumps, I can definitely tell you I can feel it resonating through the seat and it just feels a lot harsher than it normally does especially with all our toolboxes and equipment in the back. As I come up to the slalom course and I'm going around the turns, it definitely wants to lean extremely hard before it actually starts turning. And since one of my toolboxes has more stuff in it than the other, some turns are a little worse than others. So here's what our ride control air springs are going to look like once we have them installed. Now these are going to give us that extra support that we need whenever we're hauling a heavy load or pulling a heavy trailer. They're designed to install between our leaf springs and our frame, and the airbag's gonna inflate, giving us that support to prevent that sagging, getting everything back in line. Now, a big benefit of having that airbag get everything back in line, back where it should be, is it's gonna take a lot of the stress and strain off of our factory suspension, not to mention getting our front tires back in place, getting our headlights aimed right, and just extending the life of our factory suspension. Our ride control springs are going to give us up to 2,000 pounds of load leveling support. Now keep in mind that these aren't designed to increase the payload of our truck, they're just there to help with those heavy loads and you don't ever want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. Now our airbag kit is going to come with all the brackets, airlines, and the bags necessary to get it installed. Unlike a lot of airbag systems, we're going to be able to retain our factory bump stop and we're not gonna have to drill into the frame at all. Our kit is gonna come with some inflation valves that we chose to mount at the back here. Now each one is gonna independently adjust each airbag, so that way we can adjust for those off-center loads. So with our airbags installed, we'll go ahead and put our wheels back on and take our truck for a quick ride. Going over these speed bumps definitely is a lot less noticeable. It's a lot more comfortable and it's not so jarring on my back. As I'm going through the solemn course, it genuinely feels a lot more stable. Going through the turns, it just wants to grab the road better and genuinely feels like it just wants to go faster. And the fact that my toolboxes aren't weighted the same really isn't affecting anything. It's still grabbing the road and turning in just fine. And as you can see, it raised our bed back up to where it should be, giving us that support so we don't have that sagging down and that really big sloppy feeling when we're going around the turns. Our airbags are going to have an operating range from 5 up to 100 PSI. We'll be able to adjust that depending on the load that we're carrying or the trailer that we're towing. Now we got our truck back to about factory height with only about 30 PSI. So now that we've seen the end result and gone over the features of our airbags, let's show you how to get them installed. To begin our installation, we went ahead and raised the back end of our truck up, lifting it by the axle, and we removed the rear wheels. This is going to make it a lot easier to get all the components in place. Now if we come in directly from where our brakes are, come to the frame, we're going to have our jounce stop. Now there's going to be a hole in the very bottom of it. And if we grab a 13 millimeter socket and a short extension, we should be able to reach from the bottom and put our socket in place. And we're going to be removing that bolt so we can pull our factory jounce stop out. Now we will be reinstalling our jount stop, but we're not going to be reusing this bolt. Now on either side, towards the front and towards the rear of where our jount stop is mounted, we're going to be putting in these U-bolts. They're going to go from the inside going out and going around the frame. Now we do have quite a bit of lines and electrical things on the inside of the frame here. You want to make sure that, that U-bolt is all the way against the frame and you're not pinching any lines or any electrical connections. So if we bring our U-bolt up sideways, 
and then turn it, make it a little bit easier to get in place. So we can grab our upper bracket now. Now these are specific to the side. And if we look on the top here, we're gonna have an L, so we'll know this is for the left side because we're over here on the driver's side. And you wanna make sure that that flange here that has no holes in it is facing out toward to where the tire would be. And then each corner is gonna have a hole. We're gonna line those up with our U-bolts going through the frame. So we don't have to worry about getting everything lined up right away. I'm just gonna put one side in, get it loosely in place. I'm gonna take a flat washer, go over the stud, and then put in a 3 8 lock nut. Just hand tight so it won't fall down. And once we have those in place, we can move the bracket along with our U-bolts to make sure that they line up and we can get them to go through the hole. Once we have the other side of the bracket up, we'll put our flat washers and 3 8 lock nuts hand tight. Now I took my factory John stop and if we look at the bottom, you'll notice that it has a crescent shape. That's what's gonna go over the axle, and this being the outside. Now we're gonna need to grind this lip off here so it's as close to flush with our John stop as we can to make room for our airbag so it doesn't rub up against it. So I'm just gonna take an angle grinder and grind this area right here nice and flat. So you can see we just ground that edge down so it doesn't stick out anymore and it's nice and flat. So we got a little bit more room here. You don't need to ground any of the actual bump stop, just that metal cap that goes around. Now it's not a good idea to leave exposed metal on your vehicle. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black spray paint. I'm gonna spray all the edges down that are down to bare metal. Now instead of reusing the factory bolt, we're gonna have a long metric bolt in our kit we're going to take one of our flat washers going over the bolt and we're going to drop it down into our bump stop so that the bolt comes out the top. We're going to be using a 17 millimeter socket and an extension. We can put it inside the John stop to now for now to help it out. And we're going to line it back up and underneath on this bracket you'll notice that there's going to be three holes. The center hole you want to line up to where we took our bolt out and the other two bolts are going to be where our John stop has those alignment tabs. So for now we're just going to loosely get it in place. Just get a couple threads on it so we can get everything lined up and then we can snug it up. And using that extension and socket is going to help you to get it to line up and snug that bolt up enough so we can get a ratchet in there to fully tighten it up. And once you have enough room to get a ratchet in place, make sure those alignment tabs are in the holes and we're gonna run the bolt in until our bracket snugs up against the bottom of the frame. Now we don't wanna really crank on it, we just wanna get it nice and snug to where it's gonna sit against the bottom of the frame right there. And with our John stop and our upper bracket securely in place, I'm going to come back with a 9 16th socket and I'm going to snug up my U-bolts. Now when you're tightening these up, you want to alternate going from the top to the bottom to make sure they snug evenly and also going left to right, making sure that you don't get a weird bind either up and down or front to back. So with everything snug, I'm gonna come back with that same 17 millimeter socket and short extension. I'm gonna go into my John stop. Then I'm gonna come back with a torque wrench. And usually it's a little easier to get everything in place in the John stop and then put your ratchet or torque wrench on just because of the limited space we have underneath. And we're gonna to torque our John stop down and we'll find the specification in our instructions. Then we can come back and we're gonna to torque our upper bracket bolts down. And again, you just remember, you kinda of wanna go back and forth alternating 
do a few turns on one and then switch to another bolt so we can get a nice even torque. So we can grab one of our air springs now and we're going to have a fitting that's going to go into the end that has a threaded hole in it. So we'll take the fitting and we're going to thread it in hand tight. Just want to get it nice and snug. And once you have it in as tight as you can get it by hand, we're going to come back with a half inch wrench and we're going to tighten this one and a half more turns. There's one and one half more turn. That'll be plenty of tight for our air fitting. Now we can grab our lower bracket. Now, when we put this in place, this lip here is gonna to need to go towards the outside and you want these tabs here so that center is raised up. This section right here will be the top and we're gonna take our airbag, place it directly over it and then if we just flip it over, we'll notice that we're going to have a hole that's threaded. It's going to line up with the slotted hole in our bracket. We're going to take the short half inch bolt along with a flat washer. We'll go through the bracket. And we're going to thread it right into that airbag. Now you want to leave everything kind of loose. It doesn't need to be really loose, but you don't want to crank down on this. You still want to be able to have adjustment to where you can move that bag back and forth and slide it in that slot. Now on our upper bracket, you'll notice there there's an oval hole. Our airline fitting is gonna go through that hole when we put our bag in place. The easiest way to get everything in is if we just slide our fitting loosely into the hole. We have to move things around a little bit. And then we want our bracket to sit right on top of our leaf springs making sure that the bag goes all the way through and it will be crooked right now but that's okay we're just going to get everything loosely in place and you just want this section here to go right over the leaf spring u-bolts so that these tabs will go directly over the leaf springs themselves now once you have your bag in place you want to make sure that the top is going all the way through that slotted hole then we're going to take a star washer we're going to go over the fitting, slide it over so it falls down over the threads. And then we're going to take a nylon nut, sliding it over the fittings again. And right now we just want to get this on there hand tight. And you want to take your time getting it started because it is nylon, so you don't want to damage the threads and cross thread it. So just get it started and then loosely tighten it up until it just makes contact with the upper plate holding the airbag in place. So with the nut in place on top, we can move to our lower bracket now. Now we're going to have some shorter U-bolts and coming from the bottom, we're going to go around our leaf springs and we're going to be going up till they can come through both sides of our lower bracket. And just like the top, we're going to take a flat washer and then a nylon lock nut and secure it down. Now you want to make sure you leave these nuts and bolts extremely loose right now. You just want to get them on there just enough to hold it in place. You don't want to run them down at all. Our airbag kit is going to come with the one length of airline tubing and it'll have fittings on each end. So basically if we take our two fittings and we just run our hand down, we're gonna to wanna to find the center point and we're gonna to wanna to cut it directly in half. That way we have one for each side. Now when you go to cut these, you wanna make sure that it's a straight, clean cut because we don't want any leaks in our airbags. So I'm gonna be using a tubing cutter. That way it's a nice, clean, straight cut. We don't have to worry about any leaks. So now we can take one end of our air hose to the bag on the left side and we'll show you how to put it in. So we're just gonna take our airline, the end that we cut, we're gonna push it directly into the fitting that's on top of our bag, and you'll feel a little bit of resistance. You're gonna to wanna to push it in until it completely bottoms out, and if we pull on it, we'll see that it locks it in place. 
Now, for reference, if you ever need to disconnect them, if you push in on the airline fitting, that small ring that's gonna be on the outside, if we hold it with our finger, we'll be able to pull the airline fitting out. But we're gonna go ahead and put our airline in. Again, double check to make sure it's locked in. And we're gonna route this to the back where we're gonna be mounting our fittings. Before we do that, we're gonna go in and install our other airbag so our brackets and everything's in place and we'll run the other airline as well. So each one of my airlines I just ran along the outside of the frame. And then once I got to the back bumper, I just went to the inside of the frame, bringing them out towards my license plate right by my hitch. Now we're gonna mount our inflation valves right here on the bumper next to our license plate on the left hand side. So we're gonna to need to drill two 5 16 holes in order to get them in place. And I just took a piece of metal that I have that I know is straight, put it against the bumper here. I'm just gonna make a few marks of where I'm gonna drill. That way I know it's gonna be nice and even and I don't have my holes on a weird angle. Now I'm gonna take a drill and a 5 16 inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill directly in now before you do, you wanna double check, make sure there's nothing behind there that could get damaged, like wiring or any other kind of brackets or anything. So we'll start with our airline that's on the left-hand side of the car. I'm gonna take a nut and thread it on to the end of the fitting here. Once we have that in place, we're gonna take a star washer, slide it over the fitting, and then reaching from behind, we're gonna have our airline come through the side that it corresponds to. So we're on the left-hand side, so we'll come through the left hole. Then we're gonna take a rubber washer, slide it over our fitting, then a flat washer, and then we'll secure it down with another nut. We're gonna do the same thing for the other airline. I'm gonna come back with a half-inch socket. I'm just gonna snug these up. You don't need to go crazy tight. Just want to make sure that they're not going to be moving around and come loose on you. Now we're going to want to fill each one of our bags up to only about five pounds, just enough so that it expands and starts to sit upright so then we get our adjustments and make sure it's nice and level. Now once you have your bag inflated, you're going to want to make sure that you have an even amount of air around the internal side. So if you just kind of give it a squeeze, you can feel the inside of the airbag and make sure that it's nice and even and that it's sitting straight up and down. Once you have everything adjusted and it is sitting straight up and down, you're gonna to wanna to take a marker of some kind and you're gonna to wanna to mark the bottom of the plate in relation to where the bag is. So basically you just wanna go around and trace the bag so that we can make sure that it's in the same position when we tighten everything up. Now, so our bottom is in the correct position as well as the top. So we wanna make sure that the top doesn't move either. So what we can do is, is if we reach up into the top section, we can just make a small mark letting us know that it's not gonna move side to side on us. Now once we have everything marked out and we know that our bag is nice and straight, we can let the air out. Now you got a couple different ways you can do it. You can go back to the inflation valve and push on the center and slowly let the air out. Since there's only around five PSI in here, if we push in on that air fitting and find that little ring, and hold it with our fingers, we can slowly pull the airline out we're just gonna let the air out of the bag, giving us a little bit more flexibility to move everything. So I make sure you get that airline fitting pushed all the way back in. So since the nut on the bottom of the bag is still loose, we still will be able to move it back and forth. That's why we wanted to make that mark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up on the plate so that we can get access to the nut underneath and we can tighten it up. I'm gonna take a three quarter inch wrench Take the open end of it, and you're just gonna wanna snug it up. We're not gonna go crazy tightening it, just only a few turns, just so it's snug. Put our bag down. 
double check that it hasn't moved when we're going to tighten everything and make sure that the top section hasn't moved at all and then we can come back and tighten up that upper nut now the upper nut is that plastic nylon nut so we really don't need to go all that tight so you're just going to want to grab a medium sized adjustable wrench and come from the side just give it a few turns just so it's nice and snug because we don't want to strip it out with the bag nice and secure we can secure our u-bolts i'm using a 9 16th socket and just like the other ones you want to run them down evenly so you want to alternate going back and forth And then we'll come back and we're going to torque our U-bolts down to the specified amount in the instructions. So with this bag all adjusted and torqued down, we're going to repeat that for the other side as well. Now with all the excess airline that we had, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big loop. That way if there's any issues in the future or any leaks we'll have extra airlines so we can make any kind of repairs so let's make a loop and then you're going to want to tuck it up out of the way so it's not going to interfere with our spare tire or anything else then we just take a few zip ties and secure everything up underneath our bed so now we can fill both of our bags up and you're going to want to put at least somewhere between 20 and 30 psi in here and we can check for leaks. So you're gonna spray the fitting and where the fitting is going into the bag. And what we're looking for is for expanding bubbles. We're using soapy water, so there's gonna be a little bit of bubbles, but we wanna find those expanding bubbles that don't seem to go away. If we aren't finding any of those, then we should be good. But you're gonna to wanna to check all of your connection points, including back at the inflation valves. And that'll finish up your look at the Airlift Ride Control Air Helper Spring for the rear axle, part number AL59570 on our 2017 Ford F-150.